So now we're looking at what has a derivative of 3x squared. We said what had a derivative of 13 must have been 13x. What had a derivative of 2x must have been x squared. And now we're thinking what had a derivative of 3x squared must have been x cubed plus c. I can check that guess by taking the derivative of it. The derivative of our antiderivative should get us back to this original function, 3x squared. So we're going to check. The derivative of x cubed, bring down the power, is going to be 3x to the second. And then derivative of c is just 0. So yes, we get back to exactly where we started. So if we do the antiderivative correctly, it gets us back to where we started. So in our new notation, how this would look, it would say take the antiderivative of 3x squared. dx just means with respect to x. You're thinking what had a derivative of 3x squared must have been x cubed plus c. We just took our first antiderivative. And again, we checked it because the antiderivative is x cubed. We took the derivative of it and we got back to 3x squared. So we know we did it correctly. So let's keep doing that. The next function we have is 1, and we want to think about what is the antiderivative of 1. So what has a derivative of 1 must have been 1x plus c. Our new notation, it would look like this. The antiderivative of 1 with respect to x would be 1x plus c, or you could just write it as x plus c, has a derivative of just 1. If you're unsure of your antiderivative, you can always check it by taking the derivative of it. So we would take capital F prime of x. The derivative of 1x is 1. The derivative of c, a constant, is 0. So yes, we get back to exactly where we started, what was in the integrand. Our last one here on this warm-up is we have a derivative of 0. I want to think about what the original function must have been. What has a derivative of 0? Every single constant has a derivative of 0. So if we just had the derivative of 0 with respect to x, the antiderivative must have been any constant c. It would have a derivative of 0. So this gets pretty tough to think about when you're just sitting here and thinking, well, I want to take the antiderivative of zero, and all I have to do is think about what had a derivative of zero. It's possible to do, like we've been doing this whole page, but one thing that's going to make it simpler is instead of sitting there and thinking, well, what had this for its derivative, we can come up with some shortcuts. So we're going to see some rules for taking antiderivatives so that we don't have to sit there and think about what has this for its derivative. Instead, we'll come up with some concrete rules that work for anything.